a speaker. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Xiang Pan. Today, I will present our paper, CSP Autogen Black Box Enforcement of Content Security Policy upon Real World Website. This is joint work by Northwestern University and Lehigh University. So content security policy is a widely uh, based mechanism to protect users against cross-site streaming attacks. It is supported by all browsers. So basically, uh, CSP allows a website developer uh, to specify a list of trusted JavaScript hosts and then the CSP can, inf can make sure that only scripts uh, from those trusted hosts can be executed. Uh, here is an example of a uh, kind of security policy. So it's specified in the web page's HTTP response header, and the script source derivative specifies two trusted hosts in this case, which are this website itself, indicated by the self keyword, and uh, the host apis.google.com. This means that for this web page, all the scripts loaded from all the other hosts will be automatically blocked by content security policy. And uh, by default, CSP disables evolve and inline scripts. So the script at the top is an example of evolve script, which can interpret string as JavaScript code. And the one at the bottom is an example of inline script, which embeds the JavaScript code directly inside the script tag. These two uh, JavaScript usages are now secure, so CSP blocks them by default. However, they are widely used in existing websites. So for compatibility, uh, CSP also allows website developer uh, to specify two unsafe keywords, unsafe inline and unsafe evolve. Unsafe inline allows inline scripts, and unsafe evolve allows evolve scripts. These two keywords, just as the name suggests, uh, if specified in the uh, policies, that will make the CSP much less secure. So just as we discussed, uh, CSP uh, mm, in, uh, blocks many like insecure but popular usages of JavaScript. So if a website would like to deploy CSP, you basically need to uh, rewrite most of the server-side code in order not to break its website's functionalities. That means CSP's deployment burden is really high. This also explains why among uh, Alex's top one million websites, only 20 of them uh, enable CSP. And this number, the adoption rate will be even lower for those less popular websites. And uh, uh, also, uh, to reduce the deployment burden for the websites with uh, CSP uh, disable, uh, enabled, most of them will use uh, two unsafe keywords, unsafe inline and unsafe evolve. So that will just make CSP almost useless in defeating against the cross-site screaming attacks. So we expect to have a system that can automatically deploy common security policies for existing websites in a secure way. There are currently three related works. Uh, the most two important works are Auto CSP and Deducta. They are white box approach, so they require server side modification, and also each of them only supports one uh, server language. And there is one black box approach called, also called also CSP, with the first letter A decapitalized. Uh, it assumes that in the training phase, it can see all the JavaScripts, which, however, is far from true. So this work suffers from serious compatibility issues. And another limitation shared by all these three uh, works is that I don't support evolve scripts and the inline scripts that are generated during client-side execution. This means that they either need to specify unsafe evolve or unsafe inline in the policies that generated, sacrificing security, or they just like the CSP block all such usage, sacrificing compatibility. So based on the limitation of the existing works, we pro propose our system, CSP Autogen, which is a black box approach uh, that can automatically deploy content security policies for existing website. 
uh, as a black box approach, it requires no server modification and supports any server-side language. And second, uh, it allows unseen but be nice scripts to be executed uh, uh, based on a novel template mechanism. Third, it can deploy CSP in a secure way. That means it will never specify unsafe inline or unsafe evolve in the policies it generates. Fourth, it can secure to transform all type of JavaScript to be CSP compatible. That means the benign ones can be executed and malicious ones will be blocked. So now the existing works can achieve that and this is why CSP autogen is compatible to existing websites. So before discussing details of um, CSP autogen, let's first say, take a look at its uh, core idea. Here are two uh, real-world uh, scripts extracted from two news page of CNN.com. Uh, they are different, but a further observation shows that they share the same code structure, like the same assignment followed by the same if statement. They are different because the data that contains are different, like the video ID or video URL are different. So CSP Autogen's idea is for each website, it builds a template that can infer JavaScript structures and the types of the content data. And then it uses these templates to make CSP more finer grained. Uh, okay, so CSP Autogen works in three phases, uh, training phase, rewriting phase, and uh, runtime phase. Uh, before deploying CSP Autogen for a website, it first needs to be run in the training phase to build template for that website. And then, when these templates are ready, the CSP Autogen can be running in the rewriting phase to protect the users on that website. Uh, the, in this phase, uh, CSP Autogen sits between the client and the server, and uh, the preferred deployment is deploying CSP Autogen at the server side, like running on this site's web application firewall, WOF, um, we discuss the other deployment, bird, uh, deployment options in the paper, but in this presentation, I will assume that CSP Autogen is running on this website's web, web application firewall. Then in rewriting phase, uh, CSP Autogen will rewrite each page. Specifically, it will convert all the benign inline scripts to external scripts and uh, inject common security policies as well as the client side library into the web page. The client side library uh, is used in the runtime phase. So when uh, this rerun page is sent to client side for execution by browser, CSP Autogen enters the runtime phase. So runtime phase is necessary because a lot of JavaScript uh, as, uh, generates during client side execution including like evolved scripts and the inline scripts that are generated uh, uh, by modifying the DOM tree. So the client side library need to make sure that all uh, such scripts, the benign ones get executed and the malicious ones are blocked by CSP. So here are some details of the training phase. Uh, first, a list of URLs with various configurations, such as uh, uh, cookies, user agents, uh, body, uh, request bodies, are sent to the highest browser cluster for rendering. So during rendering, all the inline and dynamic scripts are sent to a template generator to build a, uh, this website's uh, template. And then uh, all the external scripts' source attributes are sent to a component called host wireless generate to build this website's JavaScript host uh, whitelist. So when these templates and the host whitelist are ready, that will be sent to the template database to store. And then in rewriting phase, CSP Autogen has three components showing the green figures. Uh, first, the policy apply engine runs on top of the WOF web application firewall of this site. It, uh, intercepts all the outgoing web, web pages, and then in order to rewrite each web page, it will fetch the templates and the JavaScript host wireless from the temp template database we just uh, trained in the training phase. 
then it can start to rewrite this file page. So basically, it first need to uh, extract all the inline scripts and then find the benign ones and store those benign ones to a trusted server. The, each website is associated with a unit trusted server. After that, uh, it can generate a content security policy for this website. The content security policy will include the JavaScript host wireless fetched from the template database and also this trusted server associated with this website. So in this way, the newly generated external scripts can be executed. Then when this rewritten uh, web page is sent to client side, uh, our client side library will take in action. It will use two techniques. One is called DOM tree observer, the other is called symbolic template. That will use these two techniques to make sure all the JavaScript generated during client side execution can be properly handled. By saying properly handled means that the scripts, uh, the benign scripts get executed and malicious ones get blocked. So now uh, let's see the template mechanism. So first, the first task of the template mechanism is to infer the JavaScript's uh, uh, code structure. We know that abstract syntax tree is a convenient mechanism to express the code in a structured way. Uh, so here is a abstract tree uh, AST of this simple code. From it, we can see that it not only show this code structure, but also show this code data, like showing the right nodes. We don't want the data here. We only want the structure of the code. So we provide a variant of the abstract syntax tree called the generalized abstract syntax tree, GST. Here is the GST of this simple code. Uh, the difference is that all these data nodes showing the red are generalized as a CSP string or CSP array. So in this way, all these different scripts uh, with the same code structure can share the same GST, and thus they can be grouped together. So uh, we expect our template mechanism not only restrict the code structure, but also the data contained in the code. So we also propose a type system. Here is how it works. And in the training phase, uh, we group together all the training samples uh, with the same GST together. And then for each data node in each GST, we will infer the type based on the actual value of the, tra of the training samples. The type could be one of the following six, const, number, enum, URL, regular expression, and the GST, which is used for the expressions appear in the JavaScript array or object. So here, the, so to match an unknown script, uh, we first extract this unknown script uh, GST. Then we will try to find this GST from the templates. If we can't find any, then we will say this unknown script is malicious. Uh, otherwise, we will further determine the data contained in this unknown script. We will uh, fetch each data and, use, uh, and match this data against the corresponding type. Only if all data pass matching uh, will we consider this script as benign. So for summary, the CSP autogenes template mechanism is composed of a GST and the type system. Uh, as we just said, CSP autogen can securely transform all kinds of JavaScript uh, into CSP compatible. So based on the way that JavaScript are imported, we classify JavaScript as uh, the following five categories. So pre-include uh, external scripts, runtime included external script, and pre-include uh, inline script, runtime included inline script, and dynamic script. Uh, Pre-included means uh, those scripts are available during the rewriting phase. The runtime included script means the scripts are generated by modi modifying DOM tree during the runtime phase. So CSP autogen can handle all these five categories, uh, but due to the limitation of the uh, time, 
uh, we will only discuss the dynamics, uh, how CSP autogen handle dynamic script in this presentation. This is the most interesting one. So dynamic scripts refer to scripts that are generated uh, using evolve or evolve-like functions. Evolve evolve-like functions are the following four functions, evolve, set time up, set interval, and the function. Uh, these four functions uh, that can interpret string as JavaScript code. Here is an example. In line two, there is a variable called text from URL prime. Uh, it contains a string uh, of uh, it, it contains a string uh, extracted from the URL parameter, and then this string is uh, appended to another string in line three, and the result string are sent to evolve function to ask you. As we just said, evolve will interpret string as JavaScript code. So in these two lines of code, it can set the email field of a form. But dynamic dynamic scripts are dangerous because it might introduce additional cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, just like what's happening in line five. So if there is a malicious script, a malicious code uh, inserting the primitive URL, and it and then this string are sent to the evolve function, then this malicious code might have a chance to be executed. So uh, CSP disables that such usage, but the problem is that uh, dynamic scripts are like this evolve or evolve like functions that are widely used in existing websites and the existing web frameworks. So if disabling all of them, then like the compatibility will be a serious issue. So we propose a s technique called symbolic template that can execute those benign uh, dynamic scripts without using evolve or evolve-like functions. So the key idea is the, the benign scripts are the ones that can pass matching uh, our templates. So that means we always know the benign scripts structure in advance. So if we can convert those structures as JavaScript functions, in the rewriting phase and then import those uh, functions into the web page. During rewriting this web page, then we can, act, uh, every time when we try to ask you this dynamic script, we, instead of using evolve, evolve like functions, we can just call those uh, predefined functions. So this function we will refer, refer to them as symbolic templates. So here is an example. First, this is a dynamic script. We are trying to use evolve function to interpret this argument string. So this argument string is benign, so we have a GST corresponding to it. So then if we can convert this GST to a JavaScript, we get the following snippet of code. Know that uh, all the data in this uh, code are represented by some symbols in orange. Then we further wrap this snippet of code inside a function and replace all these symbols as this function's templates, or uh, this function's parameters. Then every time when we try to execute this dynamic script at the top, we will first extract all the data in this uh, dynamic script showing the red and the green. And then we will use those data to call the functions defined at the bottom. So in this way, we can execute this dynamic script without using evolve, evolve like functions. So here are the steps. So in the rewriting phase, we will rewrite all the evolve and evolve like functions. Note that all the rewriting function uh, cannot interpret the string as JavaScript code, so that will not be blocked by content security policies. And then in the runtime phase, whenever a uh, evolve or evolve like function get called, our rewritten function will be invoked. So in the rewritten function, we will first match the argument string against the templates. If no match, we do nothing because we will assume, okay, this script is malicious. If there's a match, then we will extract the data from the, uh, this argument string and use those data to call the corresponding functions, which we refer to as a symbolic template function. So the whole process works uh, synchronously. So it means it preserves the functionality of evil or evil functions. 
So next, let's see some evaluation results. Uh, first, we want to see if this template mechanism is effective. So we did this experiment on Alex top 50 websites. For each website, we crawled 2,500 web pages, and we used 2,000 web pages as a training mm, training set, and then and build the templates. Then we use the template to match the scripts ex extracted from the remaining 500 web pages. The matching rate is showing this figure, and it ranges from 91.6% to 100%, with a median value of 99.2%. This means that this template mechanism is effective. Next, we want to see uh, how long a template can maintain a high matching rate without update. So in this case, we select six popular websites. For each website, we crawl 2,000 web pages on four different days. January 1st, April, uh, February 1st, March 1st, and uh, April 1st. So we use the data collected uh, on January 1st to build a template, and then we use this template to match the scripts extracted from the remaining three days. Uh, the matching rates are showing the last three columns in this figure. So from this table, we can see that Amazon, CNN, and Facebook, their templates can man maintain a high matching rate for three months. Right, and uh, Yahoo's templates works well uh, for two months, and Google's template needs to be updated every month. Uh, next, uh, we want to see the performance overhead of CSP uh, Autogen. So this time, we evaluate the loading time of Alex top 50 websites with and without CSP Autogen. So the, load, the results are showing this figure. And the medium overhead is 470 milliseconds, uh, incurring 9.1%. So to have a better understanding of the overhead, we further break it down into the following six categories, downstream parsing, uh, script transmission, GST building, template matching, and uh, handling runtime inquiry scripts, as well as the dynamic script. So the re from this table, we can see that the major uh, contributor comes from uh, downstream parsing and uh, runtime included scripts processing. For the former, it, it can be further optimized by choosing a more efficient parser. The one we are currently using is uh, implemented by Python. Uh, it's easy to use, but not very efficient. For the runtime inc included script uh, handling, it's running asynchronously. So although it will incur significant overhead, uh, it will like, affect user later because it's running asynchronously. So last, we want to match the compatibility of CSP Autogen. So first, we run CSP Autogen on Alex top 50 websites, and uh, we use the uh, image uh, algorithm to uh, measure that all these web 50 websites can be correctly rendered. And secondly, we manually did uh, extensive case studies on five popular websites in five different categories. Uh, for example, with CSP Autogen enabled, we send and receive email and purchase several books, uh, also like uh, shared and commented as on some news. And the results show that CSP Autogen can preserve the functionalities of email, online searching, online shopping, online social network, and the web portal. So con for conclusion, so CSP Autogen is a training-based black box approach to uh, deploy common security policy to existing websites. It can securely convert all, all types of JavaScript to be compatible with CSP. And uh, the evaluation results show its uh, overhead is acceptable and uh, it's compatible with existing websites. So thank you. So we, <clears throat> we have time for maybe a couple of questions at this point before the end of the session. Please step up to the microphone just like before, state your name and proceed with your question. Uh, 
impressive work. Uh, my name is Zhongjie Wang from UC Riverside. And my question is uh, regarding to the symbolic template. Is it possible that the attacker inject uh, some uh, evolved functions uh, that match the template but with malicious parameters? Uh, yeah, uh, actually not only like symbolic template, all for all the other like inline scripts uh, and uh, runtime include scripts, if an attack could find a way to like bypass the template mechanism, for example, that if I find a way to write a script that has the same structure of BNI scripts and their data type matched against uh, the, the type of the data in our template, then yes, that can bypass the system. But we think, at least we haven't found such cases. Okay. 